But the question should be in our minds, how did the devil, how did Satan get control of this earth? How did it become his earth? This world we live in, this earth, how did it become his? When Jesus is the one who created everything. That's what we're going to learn tonight. I've said it in parts here and there, but tonight I'm going to detail how, how it happened. As we know, the devil has always wanted to be God. In Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 14, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stores of God. I will also sit upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the crowd, and I will be like the Most High God. This was Satan saying these things. Satan has always wanted to be God. And because he wanted to go and be equal to God, God kicked him out of heaven. Oh. And half, it says a thing about half the angels followed him. That's where we get our demons now. Demons are angels. The devil was an angel also. But because of him, several followed him. So, but the Lord has shown right here how the devil has always wanted to be like God. He wanted to be like the Most High, it says. He wanted to be. But it didn't happen. God kicked him out of heaven. Now we're going to go to, to creation in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them, ha and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and o over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, This is talking to Adam and Eve, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and of, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So these two verses were shown that God gave Adam dominion over the earth. He, he said these fowls and the sea and all that, but he also said over all the earth. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou might, mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now this was the command to, to, uh, to Adam and Eve, not to eat of that fruit. He said, because if you do, you're going to surely die. Well, we know that they didn't physically die because they replenished the earth. So Adam and Eve didn't die physically, but they did die spiritually. They, longer, they no longer had... They was able to see God up to then, but once you get sin in your life, you can no longer see God face to face and live. All right. So he, they died spiritually, but they also brought physical death. Because before then, Adam and Eve would have lived forever because there was no sin. They would have lived forever. But because of, of this, because they did have the, the fruit, now we do die. Physically, but I'm just showing here it wasn't a physical death right there on the spot. Like sometimes in the Bible, it does show it. He he, they they're put to death right there on the spot. But right here, he says you will surely die. He was talking about spiritually. You no longer have that communication with me. This he did to Adam. Genesis three, verses one and through six. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now this is the devil. Everybody knows that this is the devil talking to Eve. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So you start right off the bat. Right off the bat, what is, what is Satan doing? Tempting. Tempting and calling God a liar. He said, no, you're not going to die. After God said, that's, that's what's going to happen. And Satan goes, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Now, as I'm, as I'm teaching this, remember, put this in today's life. You can, you can put this in today's life. Because there's people out there who, who, who don't believe that this is the Word of God. 
that there's mistakes in here. There's people who believe that. This is what Satan is doing. Say, no, no, you're not going to die. He's lying already. He, call, he starts off right off the bat calling God a liar. Anybody who tells you that there's mistakes in here, that this is not the infallible word of God, they're doing exactly what the devil's doing right here. The devil called God a liar. If we say this book is not true, if we say this book has mistakes, we're doing exactly what the devil did. So anybody who tells you this book, I'm talking about the King James. I'm not talking about all these other translations. I'm talking about the, the Bible, the Word of God, this one, King James, that was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Anyone who says there's mistakes in here is doing exactly what, what the devil is doing right here. Because if this is not the perfect Word of God, then how can God hold us accountable for anything that we do if we don't have the true Word of God? God is just. He's very just. So He's given us a book that's just truth. Because if this book is not truth, then he cannot hold us accountable for whatever we do because we didn't have the truth. Verse 5. For God doeth know that in the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This is the devil telling Eve that. So since, like I said, since the devil failed to being like God, he wanted to be like God, but since he failed at doing it, now... Like it says in Isaiah, you know, back in Isaiah 14 where it says, I want to be like the Most High. Since he failed at that, so now he's going to go through man. He couldn't do it, but now he's going to go through man to try to get this done. That's why he's telling Eve what he's telling her. He's telling her, you can know what God knows. He's telling her right here, you can know good from evil. You can be like God. Now, do we have this in the earth today? Do we have religion that teach this? Yes, we do. We got the Mormons. The Mormons will tell you you can be like God. That's what they believe. They believe you can have your own little world and you could be, you could be God of that world. That's what the Mormons teach. We're not going to be just like God until either we go to be with Him or the rapture. Then we'll be without sin anymore. Then we'll be perfect like Him. But for right now, there's nobody here on earth who can be just like God. And that's what they're teaching. And that's what the devil's doing right here to Eve. Oh, you can be like God. You can know good from evil. That's what he's telling her. So since the very beginning of the time, it's been this way. People are trying to point another way that you really don't need God. They've been doing it from the beginning of the time. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Temptation is very pleasant to the eyes. Most of our temptations that we have are, are pleasurable temptations. <coughs> Most of them. And just like right here, Eve and Adam, because it says, and her husband that was with her. So Adam was with her during this time. So they were both there. They were in a place they shouldn't have been because they were tempted by that tree. If they wouldn't have been in the garden where that tree was, the temptation wouldn't have not been there. But it was right there and right here. It was pleasant to look at what happened. When we get around temptation, the Bible says to flee from it. To flee from temptation. Anything that's not going to that might bring you down, you need to run from it. The first mistake was that. They were in a place where they could be tempted. Matthew 6.13, the Lord says, And lead us not into temptation. The, the Lord's Prayer. That's what it says in there. Lead us not into, into temptation. So they shouldn't even have been there. Don't be in a place where it can lead you into temptation. Adam, right here, Adam chose... Eve over God. The devil was talking to Eve. Right here it says he was talking to the woman. But it also shows that Satan was right, I mean the, her husband was right there with her. Now as man of the house he should have said something, he should have done something. But he didn't. And then when Eve offered him the fruit also, he took of it. So he put Eve in front of the Lord, in front of God. But don't look down at Adam. We can't look down at Adam because we do the same thing also. Even today, we still do the same thing. We either, it's either family we put before God, 
we'll put friends before God, or we'll even put religion before God. So we can't say too much about Adam here, because we do the same thing today. But these teachings are to help us to see what we're doing. God is number one, right? He is first in your life. Now, Adam, remember, Adam had dominion. Adam was the ruler of the earth. So you could, you could say he was the king of this earth, because God gave it to him. He was king of the earth. In Romans 6.16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey? whether of sin unto death or of a obedience unto righteousness. Adam and Eve chose the, the first part. They chose to listen to the devil and obey him instead of God. God said not to eat it, and what did they do? They ate it. So they chose to listen to the devil. Again, we can put ourselves in this place, because there's times we put the devil first before, before, the, before our Lord. And one, of, and one of the ways we do it all the time is when the Lord brings someone in front of us. And what's our ministry? Our ministry is to tell people what the Lord. He said, he said, blessed are the peacemakers. We're peacemakers. Peacemakers mean the peace we have from God now, we need to give it to others. But we don't. We're listening to the devil. For whatever reason he gives us, whatever excuse he gives us, we don't talk to our friends or our family or whoever comes across our, our way. All right, we listen to the devil. We put the devil before the Lord. And maybe you don't realize this is what you're doing, but this is what you're doing. When God says do this, but you don't do it, the devil doesn't want you to witness to anybody. The devil doesn't want you to tell anybody about God. So if these persons that pass you by as you're going through your life through the day and you don't say anything, you're giving victory to the devil. You need to realize that. These are ways we give victory to the devil instead of our Lord. Adam was a king, but since he was defeated, the devil defeated Adam right here. Because a king has dominion and is a ruler. But when someone else comes, you see, once Adam became a sinner, he was no longer a king of this world. The Lord made him that way because he was perfect. He was without sin. But once he sinned, he was no longer perfect. Satan made Satan gave him the temptation and he fell to it. So when so since Satan beat him and he's no longer king, if one man beats another man, what's what's that do? This man is over that man now because he defeated him. Well, we're talking about Adam being the king of the world, a ruler. Well, since Satan defeated him and had him go against God, Satan is now king because of what he did to Adam. Adam is now a slave to the devil because he took he put the devil first over God so now Adam became under got under the devil y'all with me now God being a just God he could have just through his words he could have put Satan away to the pit to the hell already where he's gonna go at the end but our God being a just God said okay since you defeated a man, I'm going to have a man defeat you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So that's why God had to do what he did. But our God is just. Even to the devil. Even to the devil, he's justice. But you say, why didn't, uh, why didn't you use an angel? Well, it says in uh, John 14, 30, it says, Hereafter I, Jesus will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, which we're talking about the devil, and hath nothing in me. Jesus is saying, the devil is coming, but I am not a slave to the devil. Man is slave to the devil. And I'm going to explain why Jesus wasn't a slave to the devil. God is speaking to the devil here and telling him, because what he has done, this is what's going to happen. Genesis 3.15, it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now there's going to be a battle between the seed of the woman and between the devil. And we're going to see that the seed of the woman was Jesus. So there's going to be a battle between Jesus and the devil. Bruise his heel means 
When Jesus died on the cross, he was nailed. His arms are out like this. He was nailed with his arms out. And he, all the weight would go down. And when it, goes, when it went down, it would press his chest. And he couldn't breathe. So he would have to always lift with his heels his feet. And his, bru- and his heels were bruised because of doing that. This is when he, Jesus was on the cross. This is the battle between Jesus and the devil, remember. This is why I'm saying. And this is the way that the devil bruised the hill of Jesus because of him being on the cross. And because of Jesus defeating hell, he defeated hell because what happened? He was raised on the third day. So he defeated the devil by doing this. But the reason it says, and he shall bruise his head, well, what was the devil over the earth? He was a king. He was the head. He was the head of this earth. Jesus bruised his head and I say bruised it because people have a choice. Stay under Satan because he, he, he was king or have a new king which is Jesus. We have two kings. After, after Jesus' resurrection, we had two kings. But we're, I'm, I got, I'm giving you a little a head stuff but the, I wanna, what I want to show is Jesus had to be a man. Remember, God said, I have to have a man defeat the devil. Because de- the devil defeated the man. So God sets out to bring this. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 20. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother married, was in spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. This was even told in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it says in Isaiah 7:14, it says, "Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign: Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel." Now, I need to say this because there's a lot of people who believe this way: the Macklin conception that the Catholics believe in. They believe Mary was perfect because Jesus was perfect. If Mary was a sinner, a sinner can't have a perfect child. Okay, if you're a sinner, then you're going to produce a sinner. So that's why they believe that Mary was without sin. Because if she wasn't, then, then Jesus would have sin also. But this is what they believe. Now, if Mary was without sin, because Jesus was without sin, then Mary's mother had to be without sin. And so on, and so on, and so on. It had to go through the line, right? Well, if you go all the way back, who is the mother of all mothers? Eve. Eve. Was Eve without sin? No. So, because Eve was, did sin, that went on down, down, down. So Mary could not have been without sin. But the Bible says, Blessed art thou among women, that comes straight from the Bible. It doesn't have anything to do with her being perfect. But I thought blessed means, you told us blessed meant blessed by God. We're blessed. But that doesn't make us perfect. That doesn't make us without sin. We're blessed also. She was blessed. But also, in uh, Luke, which I gave you to you right there, chapter 1, verses 46 and 47, it said, And Mary said, My, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Now, the only people who need a Savior are sinners. Mary's right here is saying, God is my Savior. So she needed to be saved. If she was without sin, then she didn't need a Savior. Only sinners need saviors. Mary was a blessed woman. She had the child of God. And that's it. She was blessed for having Jesus. But that's it. She was not perfect. I'm I'm showing you right here, she was not perfect. All right, and I just, I'm showing you why they they say she was perfect because Jesus was perfect. But I'm gonna show you why Jesus was perfect. The egg of a woman has no life, has no life, until a man comes, the Father. That egg can be there forever, forever, and forever until a man comes in. It's just an egg. There is no life there. Verse 19 of uh, Matthew's one. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he taught on on these things, 
Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Joseph loved Mary. But back then, if she was pregnant before marriage, then she, she committed fornication. And uh, back then, fornication, adultery, you got stoned for it. Women got stoned for that. Just like that woman they brought to Jesus because she was caught in the act of adultery. They wanted to stone her. Well, that's what they did. But, but Joseph loved her, and he was like, he didn't want to get her stoned to death. But then he's got the Lord over here. You know, that's why he, it says, and he thought on these things. He had to think, okay, what am I going to do? Because God's ways, she's supposed to be stoned to death. But the Lord appeared to, to Joseph and said, hey, this is what's what. In verse uh, 21. The angel of the Lord appeared. Yeah. Well, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. Whenever you... Was the angel Gabriel. No. Whenever you read in the Bible the angel of the Lord, it, it speaks about Jesus. Gabriel is... When it talks about Gabriel, it, uh, it says his name. But when it just says angel of the Lord, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus God. So Jesus came down and talked to Joseph? Jesus God. Remember, there's a difference. There's Jesus man and there's Jesus God. I've taught on that. Y'all gotta y'all need to understand that. Jesus is God, right? We know that. So Jesus came as God here to speak to Mary. And in verse twenty one, and she brought forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Jesus was born without sin because of the Father. Who is the it says Holy Ghost. Who is the Holy Ghost? God. The Holy Ghost is Jesus. Jesus is God. They're all three the same. You know, when you're praying or whatever, if you want to say Holy Spirit, God is not going to get jealous because you said Holy Spirit. Or if you want to say Jesus, God's not going to get mad because you said Jesus. And vice versa. If you say God, that doesn't mean... Because they're all three the same. You're speaking to the same person. So she was... Who's the Father? It says the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So if, if the Father is without sin, then that made Jesus without sin. Because life doesn't come until the man comes. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Remember, the egg is, there is no life in an egg until the man comes. So when the Father, when the Holy Ghost came and Mary conceived, that brought life to her leg. But it brought life from a, from a sinless father. Y'all with me? In Galatians 4, chapter, uh, verses 3 and 5. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. We were slaves to the devil. We were under bondage. We were slaves of the devil. Until, we, until the Lord came and we had a choice. And in verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. He was saying, because of Jesus was born of a woman, that made it legal. That made it legal that Jesus could go against the devil. This is what I'm trying to show here. It had to be a man to go against the devil. Remember, but because because he was born of Mary, that made him man. And in verse five, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. We have a choice of being children of God. Or being slaves to the devil. That's our choice. That's what it's saying. Now we can see how God made the battle right. He said, now, now devil, I do have a man who can go against you. If Jesus would have sinned one time, one time, he would have became a slave to the devil. All men from Adam on down who were sinners were slaves to the devil. Alright, you understand that? So if, if Jesus would have sinned just one time, then he would have been under the devil just like the rest of us. And he wouldn't have been able to redeem us. Because then he had a sin. The wages of sin is death, right? Well, he would have had to pay for his own sin. He couldn't pay for our sins because he had his own sin to pay for. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be righteous, be made the righteous of God. Jesus knew no sin. 
Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Though, we, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and by, and by being made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Jesus being a man had to learn. Remember, Jesus was a man. Jesus had to learn how to be obedient to the Father. It says it right here. He had to learn how to be obedient to the Father. The temptations were brought to him just like us. Temptations was, was brought to the Lord, to Jesus. Same thing we have today. And he passed the test because he said, and being made perfect, meaning he passed all the temptations that came Jesus' way, he passed the test. He was made perfect. Now we have salvation through him. We have salvation through him. If what? If we obey him. You can't just say, I believe in God. And think you're a Christian. You cannot say, oh, I believe in God. That does not get you to heaven. Getting you to heaven is obeying him. But like I said before, the devil, he believes in God. But he didn't obey him. So people who say, I believe in God, does not mark them as being a born-again Christian. Because the devil believes more than we do, because the devil has seen God. We've never seen God. The devil has seen God. So he believes in God more than we do. But like I said, believing, when you say, I believe in God, that doesn't mean anything. Right here it says, to have salvation, you have to obey Him. This. Philippians 2, chapter 2, verse 5 and 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's saying, be like the Lord. That's what it's saying. Be like Jesus. Verse 6. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God. This is just one of those verses. Jesus didn't think it was a robbery to be equal to God. Why? Because he was God. What's John say? John 1 14? Well, John 1 1 says, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14 it says, and the Word became flesh. The Word was God. And then in verse 14 it says, and the Word was made flesh. So the Word was God. God was made flesh in verse 14. That's chapter 1 of, of John, if y'all want to read that. But many, like I said, I've showed you many, several verses to show you that Jesus is God. But right here is just another one showing you that He is 100% man, but He's also 100% God. He's 100% man. Why? Because He was born of a woman. That's, to understand the Bible, you got to learn those two. When it's talking about Jesus the man and when it's talking about Jesus the Lord, the God. Okay? you got to understand that. Because if you don't, you're going to get very confused. In verse 7, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. That's why I say he was 100% man. He, when he heard it say he made, no, he made himself no reputation, he didn't make himself known as being Jesus God. He made himself known as being Son of God. So he didn't come saying, hey, I am God. And right here where it says that he was a servant, it doesn't mean what we were talking about earlier, how we're slaves. That servant right here doesn't mean he was a slave. Servant right here means he served the Lord. He served his father. Jesus, the man, served his father. He was a servant of the father. In verse 8, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Again, being like a man, Jesus was willing to suffer humiliation even to the point of death. And he did. We know what Jesus went, went through. Even the death of the cross. The cross back then, they had different ways of being uh, killed. And the cross was for your criminals. The cross for the, was for those who were really mean who were really bad. The cross was a humiliation of a, of a death. Like we have, we have Stephen. Well, we have many disciples who were stoned to death for being Christians. You have uh, John the Baptist. He was beheaded because he believed in God. Because he looked toward God instead of the religious leaders. So these men, they died because they were believers of the Lord. Followed the Lord. But Jesus, 
They didn't kill him that way. They put him on a cross. And like I said, back then, that was the most cruel, painful, and, and uh, shameful way of dying. And that's where they put him. Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. Now remember, Jesus is man here. And he's praying here to the Father. And he said, Lord, he said, Lord, if, if this, because Jesus knows what's about to happen. Okay, his Father done revealed it to him. And as a man, as a man, he was saying, Lord, if there's any other way you can do this, you know, do it. But if it's your will, this, but if this is your will, if this is the way you want it, then he says, I will do it. Now, can we learn from that? Well, Lord, that, that's kind of hard. But if it's God's will, we need to do it. Just like Jesus here. He was speaking as a man. He was saying, Lord, if, you can, if there's any other way you can do this, please do it. But if there's not, then I will do it this way. And that was Jesus, the man. Remember, Jesus didn't come down here and do the miracles as God. When he did the miracles, healed the sick, he did them through the Father. Just like today, if a man goes and lays hands on someone and they're healed, they did it through the Father. They didn't do it on their own. Well, Jesus did the same way. Jesus was a man. He, he did it in the will of the Father. The Father told him to go do this. So Jesus didn't come down here as God and perform the miracles as God. He said, everything I do, I do in the will of God. That's what he says. He didn't say, I do of my own. He said, I do in my Father's will. So as a man, that's the way we do things. We do things the way the Father wants us to. Satan has been killing men since he became king of the earth. He's been killing men since he became king. And he had the right to. Because he was king. And plus in Romans 6.23 it says, For the wages of sin is death. So Satan was like, Lord, I'm just saying, I'm just doing what you, what you said in your word. The wages of sin is death. So, yeah, he's killing these people. Satan had the right to kill these people. In Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that hath power of death. That is the devil. It plainly says right here that he had power over death. The devil. In the, in the Living Bible it says it this way, Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as human beings could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had power over death. Now you see why I said the devil had the right, he had the power over death. It says it right here in the scriptures. But Satan made a mistake. He had power of death, but he made a mistake right here with Jesus. He killed an innocent man. Jesus was without sin. Satan, the devil, killed an innocent man. And God said, you done messed up. I let you kill all these people because the wages of sin was death. But sin, but Jesus, my son, was without sin. So you have committed murder. Because Jesus at the cross, he didn't commit sin. At the cross, he took on our sins. He took on our sins to be crucified on the cross. Now it's not that he sinned. He took on our sins. Luke 23:46, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And then in John 19:30, he says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Like I said, Jesus died for our sins. Now we can go to the Father and ask for forgiveness. Those who make Jesus Lord of their life. But mainly what I'm trying to show here, Jesus was a man, was a man. He was 100% man. And the Bible says he wept, he had feelings, he had all the things of a man. And But, but one thing that I pointed out the other night, Jesus never, there's no words in here where it said Jesus laughed. Nowhere in here. Why? Because Jesus took this very serious, very serious. 
He's not going to. He's not saying we're never going to laugh when we have fellowship and stuff. You know, we we joke, or we laugh. But I'm just showing you. It never said that Jesus laughed in here. He said it. He said it. He wept. It had a, he had all these other feelings, but it never said he laughed. And that's because this here is very serious. If you want to, if you're a born again Christian, it's a very serious walk. It's not something you just play with. It's not something you can say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, and then just go about your way, your way. In uh, John chapter 12, verses 31 and 32, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now who has the power? He said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world, and who is the prince of this world? Satan. Satan will, is cast out. He will be cast out permanently. He's still here, but he will be cast out. Jesus is king. But what God is doing, he's given us a choice which king we want to follow. Jesus has defeated the devil, but the devil hasn't been put in prison yet for what he's done. He hasn't been put in hell. The Lord, God, He's given us a choice. He's given us a choice. He's not making us, okay, y'all going to follow Jesus now. Because then we'll be just robots. He wants our will to be, to be under Jesus. He's given us a free will. So we have a choice. Everyone in this earth has a choice. Everyone will know who Jesus is. Because in John, it says, I enlighten the heart of every man. Every man. He said every man. So if he said every man, I don't care if this man was born in the jungle, a thousand miles away from anybody, somehow, some way, the Lord is going to witness to this guy. He said, I enlighten the heart of every man. And he says that because on the day of judgment, no man will be able to go before God and say, I didn't know. So right here, this, this verse right here, now shall the prince of this real world be cast out. Just like we sang, and Satan is vanquished in the song that we sang. That's what's going to happen. Satan is defeated. We have a new king. Those of us who have given our life to Jesus, we have a new king. Jesus is king of our life now. But there's a lot of people who the devil is their king. They don't say that, but it is. Remember, broad is the gate that goes to hell. Narrow is the gate that goes to heaven. There's a lot of people who are who are living under the kingmanship of the devil. Do you understand why the devil became king of this earth? So if anybody tells you, you know, this, I named this teaching, Who is your king? This is what I named it. Because there's two kings. There's the prince of the earth, which is the devil, and then there's our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and defeated, defeated the devil. And the way he defeated the devil was by defeating the grave. The devil could not keep our Jesus in the grave. Remember, the devil was right on killing everybody, but he messed up when he killed Jesus because he murdered an innocent man. That's why we are where we're at now. Because if, if that wouldn't have happened, the devil still would be ruler of this earth, and we wouldn't have a king. But you see how just our God is? Even to the devil. He said, well... Since a man defeated you, I have to have a man de defeat you. Since you defeated a man, I have, a, I have to have a man defeat you. And he did. Because Jesus was born of Mary, he was man. 